this section, we'll talk about how to use AutoRig Pro to bind your character. Before we start our class, you can go to the description to download the course required materials. Or you can go to my personal website, kurtway.com, to download the files. Okay, let's open uh, our Blender. You can go to the file, open, and find the course requirement materials you download. And there are four folders. You can go to the first folder. There is a model I just prepared for you. Just open it. Now you get your model panda. Okay, you can uh, click the uh, viewport shading. Then you can see the color here. I didn't use any UV mapping when I texturing the panda. I textured each part separately. So you won't have a situation that you lost the UV mapping and finally everywhere is pink. In the same folder, there are another two models, rocks and bamboo. Feel free to use them to create your own thing. Okay, let's start our binding process. First, we need to do some pre-check before binding. I have just summarized eight essential pre-check. It can greatly reduce the probability of making mistake. The first check is the scale and rotation check. You can press N, go to the toolbars. Before binding, you have to make sure your model have no rotation and scale. You can just select all the part of your model, Ctrl A, and apply all transform. Now your location and rotation is zero and your scale is one, and your origin is in the world center. Okay, then the second one is your model position and orientation check. First, your model needs to be symmetric along the z-axis and the world center. And making sure your model's feet is on the red line, the x-axis. And then you should make sure your model's face should be oriented to the negative y-axis. You can double check the navigation tools to make sure which direction is the negative y-direction. Okay, the third pre-check is the curve pre-check. You should make sure the model you want to bind have no curve on it. If your model have any curve on it, you cannot bind successfully. Um, since our character have no curve, we just skip this part. The fourth pre-check is your model height check. The model should not be too big or too small. Uh, the height of your model should not exceed 2 meters. It should be a normal size. If you don't know how the 2 meters looks like, you can just shift A create a cube. The cube is exactly 2 meters tall. You can compare your model to the cube. Okay, the fifth pre-check is the model topology check. It means your model shouldn't have too many or too few faces. If you have too many faces, your software will be very laggy. But when your faces is not enough, for example, when your legs and your arms don't have too many lines to support the bend, it will cause a lot of problem when you do the movement. Okay, let's add some lines to your arms and legs. You can Ctrl R to loop cut your arms and legs. Scroll your mouse wheel, you can increase the loop cut numbers. Since our model is not uh, too complex, uh, you can add some loop cuts here. It will make your movement more natural when you bend your arms. Okay, the sixth uh, check is the parenting check. It means the main object you bind should be an independent object. It shouldn't have any parenting objects. Okay, the seventh check is the modifiers check. Someone may tell you that you should apply all the modifiers before rigging. That is just partially correct. For example, some modifiers you should apply before rigging, like mirror modifier, solidify modifier, and boolean modifier. This modifier may increase some faces and lines which normally be part of the deformation, for example, the thickness and the symmetry of the body. It may cause some weight calculation errors if you don't apply them before rigging. Some modifiers that normally you can keep them, for example, the subdivision modifier and the bevel modifier, these two modifiers normally won't affect the base structure of your model. And when you're using the array modifier to create some repetitive elements, normally you can keep it. So there are only six of the modifiers. So how about the other modifiers? Should I apply it or keep it? Actually, it depends. But it's a good practice to experiment. You know the modifier is a non-destructive modeling. And it will save a lot of computer resource if you are doing a complex project. It's worth to keep the modifier and double check if it will affect your movement after rigging.
And if your project is small and you are worrying about、uh, the modifier will affect your weight calculation, you can just apply them. Okay, let's back to our panda model. Let's see which modifier we should apply and which we should keep. For example, the mirror modifier we should apply them. The subdivision we can keep it. And the panda's eyes patches, I used the shrink wrap modifiers. Normally, you can keep it. Currently, the eye patches is shrink wrap to the body mesh. But when I do some dance movement, when my hand is near my eye patches, the eye patches will snap to my hand, so that it will cause some ugly trouble. So in this case, I rather to apply the eye patches. Okay, we can back to the object mode. We just select the、uh, the eye patches and right click your mouse and convert them to mesh. It's a good way to quickly apply all the modifiers. Okay, for the mouse, we can do the same thing. We can just、uh, apply the shrink wrap and the solidify modifier. Keep the subdivision modifier. Let's check the panda ears. We can apply the mirror modifier. Okay, that's all for the modifiers check. Let's move to the last check, which is the backup check. Always remember to backup. Actually, before you apply the modifiers, it's better to have a backup. You should have a backup without applying the modifier, in case you want to change some part of your model later. Let's Ctrl Shift S to backup a version after you apply the modifiers. Now we already finished our eight essential pre-check before rigging. Let's move to our next section. We will use Auto Rig Pro to bind our character. Please make sure you already install the Auto Rig Pro on your Blender. First, we need to select the main object of your character. You should have the、uh, head and the body. If your head and the body are separated objects, you can use Shift to select the head and the body together. For the rest part, the eyes, the nose, the ears, I model them separately. We can select later. First, let's select the body first, the main object. Now we go to our sidebar. We select the ARP tab. There are four menus.、Um, ARP have a lot of functions. If you are new for ARP, don't be panic. You just follow my steps, and you will get through it. Open the second menu, Smart menu. Select the body. And get selected objects. We choose full body and OK. Now you can see the menu changes. At the same time, the ARP will create a new object in your collection. Click at neck. It will show a, a green dot. Put this dot on the neck. Press your number pad three. You can switch to the side view. Make sure the dot is in the middle of your neck. Okay. Let's press one back to the front view. Add chain. Okay, put here, three side view. Ah,、oh, put here. The neck is too low. We can G Z to make the neck up a little. Okay, press one back to the front view at shoulders, and put the two dots here. After adding shoulders, it will request you to add wrist. You can click the add wrist and put them on here. You can press seven switch to the up view. Make sure the wrist dot is in the middle of your arm. Now is the spine root. Click the add spine root. Normally you may think put it here, but this is a panda. We should put it a little bit higher. Since the panda's leg is too short, put the root higher will make your animation looks more natural when the panda doing dancing. The last one is the angle. You can switch to the three side view to make sure it's in the middle. Now the ARP will request you to add fingers. Our panda model only have four fingers. We can select four fingers. By this time, I want to make my animation more easier, so I just uncheck the fingers. It will not add the fingers bone, make your animation easier. Click go. It will create a full bone structure for you. At the same time, ARP will create a folder here, a character folder in your collection. You can just ignore that. Before we go to the next part, we should double check our skeleton, especially on the elbow and your knees. You should make sure the bending direction is correct. The elbow needs to bend at a slightly backward, and the knees need to be bent forward. Let's do some little adjustment for the bones location. 
the knees should be a little bit lower. Okay. When you're happy with the skeleton, you can just go to the first menu and find the match to rig. Okay, the first menu, match to rig. It will auto create a group of controllers for you. Someone may be not familiar with the controllers. What are the controllers used for? You know, sometimes when we do animation, when you try to control the bone movement directly, it will be very inconvenient. So ARP generates some controllers, some handlers for you, making your animation easier. After we match to rig, we are auto switch to the post mode, not in the edit mode anymore. Some of the controllers you cannot see because it's hide in the body. You can go to the object property, find the view display, and check the in front. Now you can see all of the controllers here. You can select one of the controller, press G to move, and press R to rotate. But you will notice that your model and your controllers are separated. They are not bind together. So how to bind your model to your controllers? The binding should be at the object mode. So we should switch to the object mode. Press tab and go to the object mode. How to use ARP to bind your object? First, we should select our model and then press shift, select the controller. And let's go to the ARP first menu. We find the skin tab and we just click the band. Okay, now we uh, select the controller and the tab, switch to the post mode. We can move the hand controllers and the neck controllers. You can see now we already bind the body successfully. But how about the rest parts? First, we should back to our object mode. Please always remember the binding is at the object mode. We can select all the parts of the body and the last and shift select the controllers. The controller should be selected last and click band. Okay, wait a minute. We can select controllers and tap switch to post mode. Now we can check. Okay, now you can see the ears and nose also can be moved with your skeleton. The legs also move okay. After we finish our binding, please remember to save a backup. We can Ctrl Shift S and save as a new name. We can change the name to rigging. Sometimes when you want to back to the rigging part, you can just go to this folder. For beginners, creating backups step by step while animating is a good habit. Okay, our class for today concludes here. Next video, we'll learn how to use the FBX file to make your panda come to life. See you next video. Cat tips.